Hi, my name is George Garcia, and I am a community manager with Fusion 360 Electronics and Eagle. In this final video of our series of importing Eagle data into Fusion 360, we're going to be going over how we can update the references in our design to use Fusion Team Libraries instead of the original library.io libraries. So as you can see here, from our previous episode, we were able to very easily upload our local library, turn it into a Fusion Team Library, and then update our design to use it. With Managed Libraries, it's also a straightforward process, but I'm also going to walk you through some of the issues you can run into. And here's issue number one. I know for a fact that this design references more than just these three libraries. And if that happens to you, you can update the list to show you all of the libraries in your design by following one of two options. You can either go into restore all library.io libraries, which will usually work, or you can also do an update all. So in this case, I'm gonna go with the update all option. So I'm gonna close the library manager. I'm gonna click update all. And you're gonna see that it tells you that the library update has modified the board. If I go back to the library manager, Now I see the libraries that I was missing. If you look, or if you forget, or you're not sure what, how many libraries are in your design, an easy way to tell is by going to the Place Components panel and making sure it's set to In Design. And you'll see, if originally they weren't showing, they'll be grayed out here. But now if I refresh the Place Components panel, you'll see that I don't have anything in gray anymore. So you can use the Place Components panel to double check to make sure all of your libraries are being shown. And that's the case here. So I'm gonna go back to the Library Manager. If you look, you'll notice that I have three libraries that are coming from the original Eagle library.io libraries, and I have one that's my own. Now, the library.io references in and of themselves are not a problem. Fusion can show you the 3D models, can show you the parts, it's all okay. The problem is that Fusion cannot directly edit library.io libraries. So in those situations, you're still gonna have to do the update. So let me show you how you can do that. In the case of the Eagle PCB libraries, the original library.io libraries, I want to get those into Fusion Team. I'm gonna do it with the RCL library as an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the library manager. There's multiple ways you can do it. The easiest way to do it is from the design itself. So if you right click on a resistor, for example, and I say open component, like we would in Eagle, we would open a component, it would open up a library. In Fusion, it's gonna say, hey, this is originally a library.io library, would you like me to make it into a Fusion Team library? And then you can go ahead and edit it here. The other thing this dialog is letting you know is that the Fusion Team library is going to be linked to the original library.io library. So again, when working with Fusion, we're being very careful as Autodesk to avoid damaging any of the original data. So this process is going to create a copy of that library on Fusion 360 Team and it's going to link it to library.io, but the original library.io library is still there, it's intact, it's not gonna be modified, it's not gonna be touched in any way when you go through this process. So you can feel very, very safe doing these transitions because your local libraries are safe, the original design files are safe, your library.io files are safe. Everything coming into Fusion is a new copy of the data, on the Fusion Team cloud infrastructure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say yes, we do wanna create that editable copy. Okay, and you'll see that here's a library. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit save and we're gonna save it in our library's location. So you could save it into the design, into, into the project I mean, 
But what we typically recommend is to save everything into libraries. Anything that's libraries, save it into libraries. You have everything in that one place, and it's just easier to remember to change. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. What's going to happen is that we now have that library here in Fusion Team. So again, we're seeing the process. Once we have the library here in Fusion Team, now we can do the update. So one thing I want to show you, and it has in refresh, I'm going to go ahead and close this RCL library. I'm going to go ahead and open it up again so we can see. Okay, I want to highlight these two icons over here. These two icons are very important. The first icon lets you know that you're working in a Fusion Team library, which is what you always want to see. You want to see that you're in a Fusion Team library because these are the ones you can actually edit. The second icon lets you know that this is linked to a library.io library. So if you think about it, you basically have two copies of the same library that they are on different buildings or different pieces of infrastructure. One is Fusion Team, the other one is library.io. And they are linked in the sense that you can push changes from one to the other. And you can do that here in the Manage menu. So you can push and you can pull. And this will be useful if you're still working with team members that are still on Eagle. You can work with the same library.io libraries. And even though you're on Fusion, you can benefit from that from their changes by pulling them in. And your colleagues can benefit from your changes by pushing them over to them, to library.io. So again, it's very safe. You're not going to lose any data. Nothing is being altered on the library.io side. So now that we have this copy, we can go ahead and do a replacement. We can do the update procedure to make sure our design uses it. So let's go back to our design. What we're going to do is going to click update and we're going to put in RCL. Okay. Now, one thing that you're going to notice here with RCL is that I have these two versions, but none of them is the Fusion Team Library. It's not being recognized. And this can happen to you. So, how do we fix this? Well, in the scenario where update the explicit library is impossible. You can try and update all. If it tells you nothing to do, that means it didn't detect it either. In this scenario, the only way to get your design to refer to the Fusion Team library is the following. And this is the state as it is today when you're seeing this video. As time goes on, we're going to continue to improve and make these things easier. But I'm going to show you the process so that when you're transitioning to Fusion 360 now, you know the way to do it and you can get your files referencing Fusion Team. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do it with both the DC Load AU library, which I had previously created here, and with the RCL library that I've just made now. So how do we do this? What we have to do is we have to get the URN of both the DC Load AU library and the RCL. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and open the file. Okay, again, you see it has both icons. This is what you want to see. You want to see both icons. If you only see the chain link icon, that means you are working with the library.io library. And that one is technically not editable. Now, in the previous uh, example with RCO, you saw that it didn't update to include the Fusion Team icon until I closed it and reopened it. But generally, you, you always want to see these two together. So let's go ahead now and get the URN. The way you do that is you click on Info, and you're going to see that you have this Team URN. So Team URN is the Fusion Team Libraries link, and Library.io URN is the Library.io library that it links to. So you have a lot of information here in this description area. What we're going to do is we're going to copy the team URN. So I've selected it. I do Control-C. And to verify that I have copied it correctly, I click here. 
Control V, and I did. I have the whole thing. So now we go back to our DC load over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the command line. We're going to type update. And we're going to put in the name of the library we want to replace. DC or update DC load AU. We're going to put equals and then we're going to put that URN number. So just a control V. Press enter. It'll tell you library update has modified the board. And I'm going to go ahead and just reset the filter. And put it into this design. And you'll see all the DC load references have updated. Okay. And notice the icon. It's the Fusion Team icon plus the chain together. So it's letting you know this library is on Fusion Team, but it is still linked to something on library.io. Whereas if you look at Distortion Explorer, this one is strictly Fusion Team, doesn't carry a link. Either one is okay. The important thing is if you want to make edits and you want to keep the data moving forward, you want them all to show the Fusion Team icon. Okay. If you're not going to modify it, it's okay to leave the original references. That's not going to be a problem. We can do the same thing with RCL. The process would be the same. So let's go ahead and I'll just speed up to show you the end result. And there we are. You can see that all the RCO references have updated. If a library is not in use, which sometimes can be the case, you can always turn it on. That'll take away the, the gray. So that's what I wanted to show you in this series of videos. Thank you for watching. Using the information in this series of videos, you'll have the best time going from Eagle and importing your data into Fusion 360 so you can move forward with your data and leverage everything that Fusion 360 has to offer. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.